Hello, welcome back to this uh, video lecture and um, I hope you are learning well and thank you for using my YouTube channel as a uh, additional as an additional resource for your uh, learning and I hope you are doing good in your reviews in your lectures and um, you're doing good in general in your studies <clears throat> uh, just keep going and you'll reach your goals of becoming the best nurse that you can be and um, for this uh, video lecture in continuation of the series communicable and infectious diseases we are going to um, discuss uh, one of the common communicable diseases that is uh, also um, experienced by the general population and this is tetanus okay so tetanus is um, otherwise known as lacto and it is characterized by painful muscle spasms which is caused by clostridium tetany also a bacteria and uh, this is a anaerobic bacteria and uh, it can be acquired through wounds as any kind of wound, laceration, cuts, punctured wounds, uh, as long as the object which caused the wound is contaminated. And the Clostridium tetany uh, produces toxins. Uh, in, in references, there are two uh, toxins commonly uh, mentioned. One is tetanolysin and the other one is tetanospasmin. Tetanolysin is the one causing the dissolution of red blood cells and the other one is acting as um, the ones who uh, cause spasms okay? and this bacteria has spores and again they are introduced into the wound usually by contaminated soils as written in different uh, references mode of transmission is uh, usually traumatic wounds uh, for infants or for for newborns they can also be infected with uh, tetanus and usually this term as tetanus neonatorum uh, usually this happens in the umbilical stump where uh, the umbilicus or the umbilical cord is uh, cut and if ever the uh, instrument for cutting is not sterile or in, or in other words it's contaminated there is a high chance that the infant uh, may be infected so uh, this is the useful source in the newborn <clears throat> then um, usually there is also there are also some questions asked if the um, examiner or the physician suspects that the child is uh, infected with tetanus first is uh, did the child normally suck okay, uh, from the breast of course and cry okay, two to four days before she was brought to the center uh, did the child have convulsions uh, did the child have a stiffness of the body and all of these questions are usually are usually asked. Okay, um, how is this protected for for the children or for the infants and newborn? Usually, one is of course through immunization of tetanus toxoids for women of childbearing age, um, and second is also immunizing the newborn themselves, newborns themselves. Then. Um, Incubation period is usually three to uh, three days to three weeks, average of uh, ten days, and there are forms of manifestations uh, based from one reference. Uh, there is a local form and a cephalic form or the tetanus. When you say local form, it's only localized. It's only a certain part of the body and it uh, manifests muscle pains and rigidity at the site of uh, infection or inoculation and cephalic form is usually uh, systemic in nature 
Um, this is uh, commonly termed as tetanus. And cranial nerves, several cranial nerves are affected. Uh, example, we have 3, 4, 7, 9, 10, and 12. And depending on the affected cranial nerves, uh, manifestations occur. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, one of the uh, common manifestations and pathognomonic signs of Lakjo or uh, tetanus it is uh, risus sardonicus, uh, the sardonic smile. Okay? In Filipino, usually some references or some teachers would say knitting aso, uh, although that has a bad connotation. Um, sardonic smile. Uh, muscles affected and manifestations just like what I've mentioned earlier on the previous slide uh, manifestations depend on what muscle region or cranial nerve um, innervates muscles are affected okay for example we have muscle and muscles so the affected part is uh, uh, have problems in mastication and closing the mouth okay, so you uh, facial muscles uh, manifest risus sardonicus or sardonic smile if the respiratory muscles are affected the patient may have dyspnea or chest heaviness uh, muscle spine uh, opistotinus or arcing of the back I'll be showing a picture of this uh, how arcing of the back looks like or opistotinus then we have GUT muscle or ur the urinary um, tract Genitory urinary tract uh, manifestations, rather, uh, it will manifest uh, urinary retention. So, uh, lesser amounts okay, of urine may be expelled. So, you need to monitor it also. Uh, GIT muscles, constipation. Then, abdominal muscles, uh, uh, abdominal rigidity, extreme mu extremity muscles. Okay, stiffness of the extremities. So again, uh, depends. The manifestation depends on the uh, cranial nerves affected and muscle groups affected. So just to uh, emphasize the, some of the manifestations, we have muscle rigidity of the extremities, local or general spastic uh, contractions of the voluntary muscles, trismus or the spasm of the masticatory uh, muscles. Then risus sardonicus or sardonic smile as a pathognomonic sign. This must to to other references this is also the, the other name for lactio or uh, tetanus. And we have opistotinus, arcing of the back muscles, spasms of the respiratory tract, and usually uh, this one of the causes of death when um, a patient have tetanus is so this respiratory paralysis or arrest then if uh, it reaches the brain of course uh, the patient may have uh, convulsions so this is the picture of a um, uh, of a patient with opistotinus and i think this is one of the most common pictures that i've seen in the internet showing opistotinus okay so very awkward uh, position uh, it's not, uh, is it inward or outward? Uh, our king of the buck, right? So I think with reference to the buck, it's in, okay, going in. And, um, okay, diagnostic exams. We have the clinical examination, uh, meaning the, the uh, clinical picture. The history is also of the wound is very important. Uh, wound care, uh, just to mention from the history of the wound and spatula test. Okay, this uh, spatula test is done uh, using, of course, in a, spatu a spatula, but if you don't have any spatula, you can use tongue depressor <clears throat> and then you elicit gag reflex. If the patient's, uh, if the patient gags, uh, it's uh, negative for possible tetanus but if the patient did not gag just like the experience when you brush your teeth your tongue 
and you elicit gut reflex, right? But if it's absent, uh, there is a chance that uh, the the patient or the client is positive uh, for tetanus. Then for management purposes, uh, there are three objectives of medical management. Uh, one is to neutralize the toxin with anti-tetanus serum. Again, this is a passive artificial type of immunization, acquired immunization, uh, to kill the microorganisms with antibiotic, which is penicillin, that's a drug of choice for uh, tetanus, and to prevent and control spasms with muscle relaxant, the choice for spasms is the azepam. And others, maintenance of fluid balance and nutrition, the breedment of the wound to allow exposure to air. Since the uh, causative agent is anaerobic, uh, so faster healing will be an effect of a uh, um, light dressing wound care. Okay? Uh, when you say light dressing, uh, not to enclose really tightly the wound okay uh, as much as possible uh, ear should ventilate ventilate within the um, uh, what says the dressing okay because uh, oxygen will enter and this is uh, going against the the characteristic of the bacteria which is anaerobic Then other therapeutic interventions, tetanus immune uh, globulin, uh, maintenance of adequate pulmonary ventilation or in general, uh, maintain uh, a very good status of the respiratory uh, uh, condition of the patient, the breathment of the wound if it's possible, meaning you uh, remove, surgically remove the dead tissues or the necrotized uh, muscles. Um, Control of muscle spasms by diazepam, as we have mentioned. Penicillin G or penicillin for the antibiotics. It's drug of choice to kill the bacteria. Fluid and nutrition. Uh, it depends on how severe the, the case is. So, um, what type of nutrition is to be given. Then we have diazepam and barbiturates. But, remember that once symptoms develop, okay, uh, specific therapy is ineffective. Okay? Therefore, institution of supportive therapy is necessary until toxins are reduced by time. Okay? So, uh, we hope that you know uh, patients with uh, suspected punctured wound or infected wound would go for immediate consultation because time is of the essence here. Okay, as stated by one reference, once symptoms develop, specific therapy is ineffective. Okay, so I have mentioned um, uh, anti tetanus serum uh, or anti tetanus uh, uh, tetanus anti toxins uh, is also used. Okay, and they can be used for adult children and also infants with varying uh, doses. Okay. Then uh, next is uh, just to mention, okay, what are the uh, what's this, uh, ways that um, a patient may be uh, put into episodes of spasms or convulsions or seizures. Uh, one is exteroceptive. Uh, they may be stimulated by noise or bright lights. So put the patient on dim light, on quiet room, isolated isolated rooms, interoceptive, stress, pain, passive flatus. Okay, as simple as flatus can elicit okay? uh, spasms. So again, do not stress, do not inflict pain as much as possible to the patient. When you say proprioceptive, uh, as much as possible, limit or avoid turning, touching the, the patient and jarring of bed. Okay? When you suddenly bump into the bed or the foot of the bed, you jar it so prevent it from happening. Okay, so one 
uh, all ages can be affected with uh, tetanus, okay, even children. And uh, one of the the um, this? most dangerous positions that we can see here is the corticate position, and that is giving you low uh, uh, level of uh, uh, what's this? Uh, cerebral or brain status okay that in that position i know you're familiar with uh, glasgow comma scale uh, there is what you call decorticate and the cerebrate and these two positions signify a risk or high risk for problems then uh, interventions just like what i've already mentioned earlier dim light minimal handling of patient gentle handling of the patient protect the patient from injury especially in times of seizures or restlessness so i've seen in the picture they also restrain uh the the patient but the use of restraints has ethical uh basis so you need also to have um orders from the doctor and to collaborate it to the family okay then uh, protect the patient from injury, provide patient comfort, prevent aspiration if patient is able to eat, and always have padded tongue depressor to be ready if such uh, seizure attacks happen. But remember, as we have mentioned before, uh, uh, the, the priority for uh, patients with um, what's this, tetanus having seizures or seizures in general uh is safety that's priority and ways to prevent to promote safety is lowering the height of the bed uh remove sharp objects or dangerous objects risky objects in the site and at the site of uh of uh the seizure um tongue depressor is is prepared this is to guard the tongue but um this should be placed, okay, this should be placed before the seizure, okay. Uh, remember that when a patient uh, has an impending seizure, it, they have aura or signs that they are going to have seizures. That's the time you place the tongue depressor, not during the attack, not during the, the, the neck is already stiff. Uh, one is you may, if you force to open it, you may either fracture the um, bone of the patient or second uh, they might they may okay, just like uh, bite you and injure yourself so patted tongue depressor is prepared and inserted before the attack preventive measure we're familiar with this with dpt and tetanus toxide for uh, childbearing mothers Clean the wood immediately and avoid having wounds. Washing with antiseptic and thin or light dressing. Uh, treatment, we have mentioned this, that the treatment of choice is penicillin and also the use of tetanus immunoglobulins uh, or human hyperimmunoglobulin or in other references, uh, tetanus antitoxin. Um, else so okay even infants are affected okay we have complications but it's not limited to these complications a hypostatic pneumonia and serum sickness due to anti uh, toxins then just to emphasize other uh, uh, nursing uh, care for clients with tetanus, immunization with tetanus toxoid as a preventive measure, quiet environment, uh, environment with uh, no or less uh, stimulus <coughs> uh, for, for convulsions, frequent assessment of respiratory status because uh, as we have mentioned also, uh, respiratory paralysis is usually the cause of of death for tetanus frequent suction the frequently suction the airway if secretions uh, are present 
use standard precautions, allow the client and family to verbalize fears and feelings. Okay? Especially if those uh, side symptoms already occur, which we have mentioned earlier, uh, this kind of um, uh, a, a low or a difficult pro uh, prognosis. So uh, as much as possible, uh, prevent the worsening of the case. See, uh, you would also have a, a difficult uh, way of managing if it worsens. So um, first and foremost, take care of the skin, uh, not to be, uh, not to get wounded, especially of contaminated ones. So um, this is tetanus, okay? And um, I uh, salute uh, this uh, batch of students that we have, uh, regardless of, of um, regardless of courses, uh, grade year, because you are, we are all trying to get through our education this uh, pandemic. So I salute to you and um, uh, keep on going, keep the faith, keep the, the patience and uh, I know in the right time you are going to reach your journey. So be the best healthcare provider that you can be, the person that you can be and remember that you are always a blessing. And please do not forget to uh, subscribe in my channel as for one. Uh, for more visual lectures like this so thank you